It was only ever meant to be, you know, 15 inch steelies and flat black paint and just a beater. I had a bet on with two mates that I was going to build it for less than 10 grand. There's probably more than 10 grand worth of paint product on the thing now and I still owe mates two slabs. I'm Aaron from Pemmelway, New South Wales and this is my 51 Chevrolet called Memphis Hell. First car was a uh, calf shit cream, 87 Magna. It had rusts in all the usual spots that an old shitty Magna would. So we uh, yeah, cut the rust out of it and had a bit of fun, painted it bright green. I suppose that's sort of the start of everything that I drive being different and not normal, whether you like it or not, I suppose. As a teenager, I was more into boats and the opposite of cars, I suppose, but I competed at a world championships over in Canada and there was a Chevy Silverado parked in the car park there, which I suppose the first time I've seen something like that, which sort of sparked the car passion, I suppose, to come out of me. Of course, Silverados in Australia are worth five times what they're worth in America, so we got an old beat up dual cab holding it over from the wreckers and stretched it out and put a space cab tub on it and painted it bright green again, the same as my 87 Magna because it was so popular back in the day. And that sort of started it. I met a few guys down in Melbourne who were into the mini truck scene and airbag suspension and chassis notches and four links and those sorts of things. So that sort of started me on the path to where I am now. On the Oz Rodders forum, I found a guy down Latrobe Valley, had one of these sitting in his back shed that he'd started stripping apart but hadn't got real far with. It was a full size truck, so the chassis was about six metres long, massive I beam front end, big dual rear. 22 inch steelies in the rear and all that sort of stuff. Wasn't really going to work in regards to what I wanted to do. Like I always wanted the thing to sit on the ground, that was, you know, first and foremost. I already had a Rodeo chassis sitting at home, already had a VP Commodore with a five litre sitting at home. So just a matter of having a big General Motors three way there and throwing it all together and ending up with this. It's a more modern drive line, far easier to airbag because the rust was so bad and it, it made it very easy to put the Rodeo floor and firewall straight into the bottom of the Chev cab. It was very surprising how well everything lined up. So the, the car really did start out as a budget build. I was building it as cheap as I possibly could. So I brought a VP Commodore with an injected five litre in it, 304 turbo 700. And from the Commodore, the tail shaft is in there as well. The diff with the disc brakes and everything is in there as well. When I brought the Commodore, it had a, a crow cam still in a cardboard box. So it's got a mild cam in it. Set of extractors, I've converted it to carby now, just so it's a bit more, looks a bit more in place with the car. In the front, because the Rodeo is a one ton truck designed to tow weight, the front brakes are already up to spec for a V8, so that's all remained stock in the front end. Just done a five stud conversion, so it's the same front and rear. I didn't want it to be a retro tech car that you open the bonnet and there was a bunch of bananas and fuel injection. I still want it to remain looking like a 50s car, so not meant to be a race car or a burnout pig, just a freeway cruiser that, that sounds angry but low and slow. It used to have billets when I first brought it, and again it was a bit more of a, a show car, street rod thing, which I wasn't really after with the car. I've gone back to what I always wanted, so 15s all around, artilleries with the white wall tyre and baby moons. With the interior, just, just wanted something simple in the brown to complement the olive. All the paintwork inside is satin, as opposed to the gloss outside, and then the chocolate brown, I suppose, with the leather and carpet matches the powder coating of the wheels on the outside. With the Rodeo floor pan, made it real easy, just Rodeo bench seat in, Rodeo seat belt, steering column, pedal box. Just something simple and nice, again, didn't want it to be over the top and too showy, but just a little bit more upper class than what a farm truck would be. To this day, I still can't figure out why. I, I get asked the paint colour question a lot. I was sitting on a bus one day and this BMW convertible drove past and it stuck out like dog's balls. Like that's the colour it's got to be. And that was probably two years before I got to the paint stage with the car. So it's just a, it's a factory BMW colour. Speedy from Speedy's refinishing up in Cardiff. He came in and did the paint and body work. What is quite an odd looking colour on a modern car really comes to life on an old curvy shaped car. There's a bit of everything going on really. At the back it's got the XP Falcon tail lights which I get crucified for. FC Holden number plate surround. On the front it's got EH Holden headlight surrounds. It's got Volkswagen headlight peaks. It's got FJ Holden windscreen wipers. So there's a whole bunch of random stuff going on there that a lot of people probably don't pick up on but makes a complete package. The bed is not a factory type bed. Like I've lifted the tub sides up to be level with the body line through the cab 
and I didn't like how square and shoved up the ass they were, so I've put some curve in it and raked it out a little bit. And it's very much a love-hate relationship. Like I've seen a guy walk up to the car and put his hand in the middle of the train and goes, I like it from here to here and I hate it from there to there. I'm like, well, if he didn't have that to say, he would have nothing to say at all, so I'm okay with it. The push for Motorex was a decision for the chop shop. We wanted to have my car there finished and painted and shiny to show what we could do in terms of getting a car finished. And then parked next to that was Henry Parry's FB at the time, which was just in primer. We'd just tubbed it and put the motor in. So we just wanted to show how we started, how we finished. So that's why it was a big push to get you know both cars there that year. It was good. There was always a crowd sort of 10 deep around it. I think if it had have just been a stock standard Chevette stock height with the normal tray on the back then people probably would have looked past it just to rest over it. When you make the thing sit on the ground and you do something different to the car and make it a bit more custom and it draws the crowd. And that sort of flowed on from Motor X into some of top 60 a couple of times and picked up a few awards along the way. The happiest I am with this car is when I'm like six hours out of town, I'm on the freeway doing 120 windows down, you know you can't hear because the wind noise through the thing and it's it's, it's loud and it's harsh and it's brash, and, but that's, again, what the car was built for and that's the most enjoyable thing out of it is sitting on the freeway doing Mark 10 and wind in your hair and, yeah, breeze up your skirt, that's where it's at.